I don't know if it was meant to pull this kind of resistance, this that much fluid that far. Ooh. It comes like bent in half like this. I think I can modify this to fit that. That piece we made yesterday went right back in here and screwed right in. There's no way we could have videotaped that. So that long stem is going down All into, the way to the bottom of the right. tank or really close and to it. And that's the top sticking up. And right then there. we hooked this up to the end of the stem and then here's the two uh, diesel feed lines going front and rear, which we we're about to hook up. But I want to zip tie these oh, in, place. in place. Just kind of loosely holding it. Mm -hmm. And make sure there's no kinks in it. Okay, that's good. Oh yeah, this as well. I'm just drilling like a hole to be a guide. Yeah. And like screw it down to the floor and then drill through it. Mm-hmm. You're genius. Clamps are miraculous, wonderful things. They're your best friends in the workshop. <laughs> they just are there for you. You're like, hey, buddy, hold this for me. Thanks, buddy. Unfriendly. We have the. This hooks up to the diesel heater. This hooks up to the little LCD control, and we have to decide where that goes. This wire is the wire that goes to the metered pump. Why do you call it a metered pump, Mike? because it's a pump and it go, it's a, I think it's a diaphragm pump the way it clicks. At any rate, every time it clicks, it, it sends out a, a known amount. So if you want more fuel, they turn up the amount of clicks that it does. And you'll hear it, you've probably heard it when we were doing the front one. It'll be a click, 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 click. And each one of those is putting out some exact amount of fluid, probably like one cc or something. There's a ginormous hole right there. This right here, okay. So these are for the mounting holes. That's the fuel. This is exhaust. This is air intake. What's that? That's where the wire goes through. Yes. And it's on the side of the air intake, meaning it won't get all hot. Yeah, and they should call these plumber holes. Because they totally eliminate plumber's crack. Okay, so what did you do? Did you screw down the plate first and now you're feeding the wire through? Yes. The electrical wire? Uh-huh. Okay. This is the pump wire going through. Oh. And now we'll feed it over into that little notch right there. Right. Like that. So we can't install it yet. You know why? Because we have to drill more gigantic holes in the wall. What? F oh, through the wall for the hose. The, the hose yeah. yeah. I want to find the guy that made these packages, and then I'm going to torture him <laughs> by cutting him with the sides of one of them for hours until he passes away. I'm just going to take one of these rods, I'm just going to tie him up and I'm going to cut him and then I'm going to cut him some more and I'm going to cut him until he expires. Cut him to death? Yeah. I'm not going to make it quick. <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel about that packaging too. <laughs> the Milwaukee ones, the DeWalt and Milwaukee ones both have lasted forever. They're both really good. we got to go through here. 
and out this side. At least there's not as many layers going through horizontally. Oh! Whoa! Kick back! Yeah. More batteries, please. 23 to the outside edge. It's like the doorway to Narnia at the back of our closet. <clears throat> okay. There it is. All right. Oh, you know what I need? What? I need a screwdriver and one of the pipe clamps. Got it. This guy's going to make a hard left and come out the front part here. I think so. Because I had to fit that connector through and there's no way of disconnecting it. Oh. So I drilled this hole and then we will eventually connect to the do other. it like that. Okay. So it's just kind of hidden there. spending the rest of your life under there? I sure am. Kind of seems like that at this point. Yeah, what's for dinner? <laughs> Weeds. Okay, now, everything's hooked up, exhaust hooked up, air intake hooked up, everything's hooked up. Okay, let's go. Time to turn it on. Okay. My poor honey. I hate doing that. I know. So this thing came with a 15 amper. So it's wired up now? It is wired up now. You know what that is? The pump. The pump. That's our pump right there. And we're waiting for the fuel to get over here. You can see the bubbles right here in the fuel line, but it's bringing the bubble free fuel right now. And it's just turning the corner over there and then there'll be no more bubbles left and it will uh, get into the pump and then come over this line and we're priming the line is what we're doing. There's a setting on the pump to prime the line. So it takes about two minutes before you get heat coming out. It does its little thing. First it turns on the fan and then it turns on the glow plug and I wait for the glow plug to heat up. Then it uh, starts feeding fuel into the tank or into the uh, combustion chamber. And then as it heats up, the fan will speed up and you'll hear it. Tick, tick, tick. Uh huh. Barely. It's soft. Yeah, but this just started making a completely different sound. Yeah, but that's just the fan being hot. Oh, really? Oh, no, it is warming up now. 
there. It's warm air now. Oh, warm up. Warming up. Yeah. Air is definitely warm now. I'll leave this one running and let it do its first burn. Well, this is really exciting. I want to feel it. It's going to be, it's really blasting out of there too. It's not yeah. like just a trickle of air. Oh, like no, it's this really is blowing. Like a, like a hair dryer on steroids. Oh yeah, that's kicking out some heat. This little puppy doesn't mess around. I am satisfied with that. That's good. Nice work, my honey. I kind of want to come out here first thing tomorrow morning and turn it on and see how long it takes it to warm up yeah. when it's cold in the morning. Yeah. That would be a good test. So I feel like we probably should explain to people um, a little bit about our heating the bus situation. Like why we did so much? <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I mean. <laughs> okay. Okay, you have to know that first of all, Mike absolutely insisted on us having a wood-burning stove for the bus for yes. obvious reasons. We live in Arizona where firewood is free and plentiful. So what a great way to heat your bus for free all winter long. But we also knew there might be times where we're in a situation <coughs> where we can't have a fire in our wood-burning stove for example, if we stayed at an RV park or something like that for a period of time. So we knew we needed an alternate source of heat. That's when Mike discovered these awesome diesel heaters. This guy I'm working with is like quite possibly like the smartest guy ever. Uh, he says, hey, have you seen these things? They're called diesel heaters. What are they called? Westboro or something like that. They're really expensive ones. But then like I started looking for diesel heaters on Amazon and on eBay and I'm finding all these Chinese ones for like two like $150. And then I started going there's a Facebook page called Chinese Diesel Heaters uh install and troubleshooting or something like that. And they had it all worked out. They had figured out these things to the to the end. The reviews are amazing on these things. I couldn't find this thing for over a hundred and like thirty nine dollars. <laughs> I couldn't find one more expensive than that. Than she would but buy. wait, if you have been following along and paying attention, you might be well aware that our mini split AC is also a heat pump. So you might be wondering why did we put a diesel heater in the back and another one in the front when we have a heat pump right here in the front. And you're right, the heat pump is awesome if we're going to be at a place where we're plugged in to be able to use it. Um, but that doesn't solve the problem of when it's cold and we're driving. And if you watched way back in the beginning of the build, we yanked our heaters out of this bus, which means that took the heaters that would supply warm air to the defroster for our front windshield. So in order to be able to drive the bus, we had to have some kind of a heating system in the front that was gonna blow hot air on the windshield. And that's one of the things this diesel heater in the front will be doing. So yeah, we definitely do have uh, four sources of heat, which is a little yeah. bit redundant, but I'm allergic to the cold. We don't want me dying, do we? Anaphylactic reaction to snow. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a disclaimer, guys. And I need to say this because one of you guys is going to be like, I'm going to do it like Blessing McBusface and drill a hole in the top of my tank. That's not what we did, okay? We did not drill a hole. We had a hatch. And then when I looked in there this morning after we cleaned it out, there was a rather large set screw there. And I was able to unscrew it and then modify it. Do not drill a hole into your gas tank because you'll blow up. <laughs> Maybe not, because it's diesel and it's a little harder to ignite diesel, but probably you will. These things are remarkable. I would say that they far exceeded our expectations about the temperature and the amount of air and heat blowing out of those vents. Yeah. Okay, we're just about to do our big real world test. It's like 18 degrees outside. We did leave our heat pump on overnight just to protect our sink from... Uh, hard freezing again and losing the sink again but uh, it's 45 degrees inside the bus right now and it is three o'clock uh london time thank you kevin <laughs> k again <laughs> it's seven o'clock here or it's eight o'clock here just turned eight 
and uh, we're going to kick this thing off here and turn on our diesel heaters to uh, see how long it takes to heat up the bus from a very cold temperature. Okay, so all we have to do is just push on. That's it. That's simple. <laughs> Let's turn the other one on. You don't have to like adjust the uh -uh. setting. This is our big real world test to see how long it takes for the bus to heat up from cold. Very cold. You can hear the heaters going from out here. They sound like little jet engines. Five. Awesome. Ten huh. the difference in one hour. Nice. Still blowing hot. Very hot, like uncomfortably hot to touch. It smells funny a little. I think it's still like part of the, like, the first new. burn. Yeah, it uh, smells a little bit like sniffing a car tire. Yeah, it up does. close. It's, it just reminds me of the smell of a tire. That is like remarkably hot. But very mild. I can't keep. Like, that's hot. This is cool. This is a fun test. We finally got the temperature up and it's almost, we both agreed it's kind of almost uncomfortably warm. We're abandoning the test so because it's too hot out here. We're gonna take it to 70, but it's just like, it's becoming balmy in here. And this is roughly the temperature we live at. We don't, I don't know, between 68 and 70 or so. But, uh, so interesting findings. It went up really fast. We've been running it about an hour and 40 minutes at this point. We've gone from 45 degrees in here Actually, it dropped down to 44. I did forget to turn the camera on for about 10 minutes in the very beginning, but in that period of time, the temperature went down one degree while this thing was, while these things were uh, kicking on. I think if we had put like something over the windows for the test, it would have been a dramatically faster test than this to get it up this high. I think that uh, I'm not unhappy with the results though. These things worked amazing. 